the trigonal bipyramid geometry for steric number five. This is VSEPR part four. So we've gone over steric numbers two through four so far, the linear, trigonal, planar, and tetrahedral geometries, and now we're going to talk about the trigonal bipyramid geometry. And this is for steric number five. In the last presentation, we'll talk about the octahedral geometry. So this is where we are on our table. We're going to be talking about steric number five, and the basic geometry for steric number five is trigonal bipyramid. As you can see, there are several other geometries that can be derived from that. All right, so let's take a little bit closer look at this basic trigonal bipyramid geometry. And so what we have here is an apparent expansion of the octet. Okay, so it looks like we have 10 electrons around the central atom. And we also, in this geometry, have five bonded atoms. And as we're going to find out, all of these atom positions are not equivalent. And so you can see that we have two different bond angles in this geometry. And we are going to see that we have two different types of atom positions. So trigonal bipyramid structures have two types of atom positions. And one is equatorial. So this is a triangular plane that goes through the central atom. Okay, so this plane would be coming in and out of the screen at you, and it would be so it'd be planar and it'd be coming in and out of your computer screen. And the axial positions, labeled with AX, these guys are in the plane of your screen, basically pointing perpendicular to this equatorial plane that is right here. Okay? So again, a 3D geometry with an equatorial plane that is sticking in and out of your screen, and it has three atom positions, and then there are axial positions that are perpendicular to that plane. There are also two different bond angles. So equatorial positions are 120 degrees apart. So it's easiest to label right here, but you should also imagine that there's a 120 degree bond angle here, and then also over here between this equatorial atom and this one. Okay, so 120 degrees all the way around, just like the trigonal planar geometry, except now we have two other atoms that are bonded, and they're both perpendicular. Okay, and the bond angle between the equatorial atoms and this, these axial atoms is only 90 degrees. So it's smaller than the 120 degree bond angles that we have for the equatorial atoms. Now, we're going to apply a really simplified version of Bent's rule for this steric number five trigonal bipyramid structure. And what we're going to say is that more electronegative atoms, they prefer axial positions. So if possible, out of, out of the atoms that you're going to bond together, more electronegative atoms are going to prefer an axial position. Less electronegative atoms prefer the equatorial positions. And basically, because these equatorial positions are roomier, so that's kind of one reason. Lone pairs also need to be placed in these equatorial positions. And so remember also that they have sharp elbows, they need plenty of room. So they need to be placed in equatorial positions. All right, so here's just a little bit of labeling. All right, so these axial positions are smaller, so they're labeled with S, okay? And then here are these larger positions. So again, remember, lone pairs always have to go in the equatorial positions. Working off of our basic geometry, now we end up with one lone pair on the central atom, okay? And so I'm going to put it in one of the equatorial positions. I put it in this one, but there's no reason why it couldn't be in this one or this one, okay? And so now we have one lone pair and four bonded atoms. Each one of these counts in the steric number, of course, so we still have steric number five, but also remember that lone pairs have sharp elbows. They are really going to repulse these bonding electrons. And so these bond angles, so the bond angle between the equatorial plane and the axial position is going to be less than 90 degrees. And these 
other two bonded atoms in equatorial positions, they're going to be squeezed together as well. So they're going to be less than 120 degrees. And so there are bond angle distortions due to the presence of that lone pair. And also remember that we're going to name this shape based on the positions of atoms. And so we call it the sawhorse or the seesaw. Either one of those is fine. You'll hear them both relatively commonly. Okay, so now what happens if we end up with three bonded atoms and two lone pairs on the central atom? So now we have two lone pairs, and again, I chose to put them here because it'll be easier to see the shape, but you could have put them in any equatorial position. So you could have put one here and one here, or one here and one here, okay? So that's fine, but the bottom line is they have to go in the equatorial positions. Now, that leaves only three bonded atoms. And so if you look at this shape here, you can see that it's a T-shape. And so that's what this molecule is named after. Now again, because lone pairs are strongly repulsive, they're going to repulse these bonding pairs much, much more, and they, re they repel each other too. Very severe repulsions there. So these bond angles are going to be less than 90 degrees. Basically, the lone pairs are taking up more than their share of room, and these bond angles are squeezed together to less than 90 degrees. Now we have three lone pairs on the central atom, and all of those guys go in equatorial positions, and that just leaves two bonded atoms, and as you can see, we end up with a linear shape. Now, all of these repulsions cancel out any distortions in the bond angle. So because we have lone pairs in all three positions, there are no distortions in the bond angle. So for instance, even though it might look like it, these guys don't distort more than this one. And so the bond angle is not distorted at all when you have three lone pairs in these equatorial positions. And so the bond angle is 180 degrees, and we call this a linear shape, just like we had for steric number two, except for now, steric number five also has a linear shape with three lone pairs in the equatorial positions. Okay, so let's go ahead and just remind ourselves of a few things before we do an example. The first is that less electronegative atoms and lone pairs are always going to go into those equatorial positions. More electronegative atoms are going to go in those axial positions. So remember, here's our equatorial positions. There's our axial positions. In an ideal world, the bond angle between the equatorial plane and the axial positions is 90. Bond angles between equatorial bonded atoms are 120. And both types of bond angles are going to distort if there is a lone pair or more than one lone pair present, except for the time when there are three lone pairs in all of the equatorial positions, then of course all of those distortions cancel out and the bond angle is 180 degrees and we have a linear molecule. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example. So pause the presentation and draw the Lewis structure for this molecule and determine the steric number, identify bond angles, name it, and be sure to identify if there are any distortions. Okay, so the Lewis structure is given right here, okay? So you should check your answer, make sure that you ended up with the same thing. Notice we have four bonded atoms plus a lone pair, so that's a steric number of five. Our basic geometry is trigonal bipyramid, but now we have a lone pair. So where do we put that lone pair? We put it in an equatorial position. And that leaves our four bonded atoms. We have two of these fluorines in equatorial positions and two in axial positions. And these bond angles are squeezed to less than 90 and less than 120 for the equatorial atoms. And naming the geometry, this is called a seesaw or alternatively a sawhorse. Okay, so what you should be able to do, and this goes for all of the parts so far plus the next part where we're going to discuss the octahedral geometry. So you should be able to draw a Lewis structure. You should be able to determine the steric number for the central atom. You should also be able to determine the basic geometry based on that steric number. And then, as necessary, add lone pairs to the central atom, identify distortions in the bond angles, 
and apply Bent's rule for steric number five molecules only. Okay, so we're going to talk about octahedral molecules, but all of those positions are equivalent, so we're not going to use Bent's rule. And then we're going to draw the molecule showing the geometry, and we're going to name it. We're going to name only based on the positions of the atoms. So part six coming up, and then we're ready for examples and practice.